The 17 News at Noon podcast is brought to you by Clinica Sierra Vista. Welcome back to the 17 News at Noon podcast, where we share your news on your schedule. Good afternoon and thanks for joining us. I'm Alex Fisher. CHP is investigating a crash where an infant was hit and killed in South Bakersfield. It happened just after 10 o'clock yesterday morning on Adams Street. According to CHP, a family was outside preparing for Thanksgiving Day festivities when the incident happened. Investigators say a 20 month old girl was behind a Ford Mustang when a family member began backing up at a speed of about one to two miles per hour. Police say the driver did not see the child who was struck and suffered a major head injury. The child was taken to Memorial Hospital where she later died. Police say drugs and alcohol do not appear to be factors in this crash. Meantime, another deadly Thanksgiving car crash, this time on the 99 just north of Palm Avenue. CHP says a man was walking on the shoulder of the freeway around 9 o'clock last night when a car hit him. Officers say the driver who hit the man was not under the influence of drugs or alcohol. Well, there was a small group of runners that decided to burn off some calories before Thanksgiving dinner. The fourth annual Bakersfield Turkey Day run was held yesterday morning at the park at Riverwalk. It included a 5K run, a one-mile walk, and a virtual run. Money raised at the sold-out event will go to the Community Action Partnership of Kern Food Bank, and every finisher was treated to their own pie. And you can walk, run, sit, or just go and eat a pie at the annual pie run held yesterday morning at Hart Park. It is an annual tradition put on by the Bakersfield Track Club. Runners get to indulge in the pie and other desserts donated to the event, and then any of leftovers uh, are donated to the homeless shelter. Blessing Corner Ministries once again made sure families in need had a very warm meal on Thanksgiving. The church has been giving away Thanksgiving meals for nearly 30 years. And earlier this week, they were able to provide more than 500 families with a holiday food basket, including a turkey, ham, all the fixings, and a dessert. Yesterday, the church stepped up once again, serving dinner to those in need at their church on Union Avenue and 1st Street. Pastors John and Bonnie Turner are always in need of volunteers. And if you would like to learn more on how to help out the Blessing Corner, just go to BlessingCorner.com. Meantime, the mission at Kern County stepped up to, pl to the plate for its busiest day of the year, yesterday offering Thanksgiving meals for those in need. It is something the church has been doing for 70 years here in Kern County. But due to a national turkey shortage, the mission says it had zero prospects for the staple of their dinner this year. But the Kern County Probation Officers Association came to their aid by asking officers to donate. And they were able to provide 120 turkeys. Love to see that. In all, the organization passed out about 500 meals. And while your Thanksgiving festivities continue, please remember, this is important, drink responsibly and never drink and drive. In an effort to keep our roads safe, the California Highway Patrol's maximum enforcement period is underway for a few more days. That means extra officers are out looking for drunk drivers through midnight on Sunday. 42 Californians were killed in freeway crashes last year during the Thanksgiving weekend, and the CHP made more than 1,000 DUI arrests. Meantime, Holiday Lights at Calm returns tomorrow. For the past two years, it has been a drive through experience, and it will be the same again this year. There are more than 3 million lights adorning the zoo's grounds with several light tunnels that you get to pass through. Tickets are $30 a car, and you must buy your ticket in advance. This is important. Go to calmzoo.org to buy those tickets. You can also stop by the Calm gift shop. The city of Bakersfield kicks off the holiday season tomorrow with its sixth annual tree lighting ceremony at Mechanics Bank Arena. There will be music and a live nativity scene. Even Santa and Mrs. Claus will make an appearance. Then it is Teddy Bear Toss Night at the Bakersfield Condors game. All you have to do is bring a stuffed animal with you to the game and let it fly onto the ice. When the Condors score, the puck will drop right at 7 o'clock. Hello, this is Tim Callahan with Clinica Sierra Vista, and we're excited to unveil the Community Health Center of the Future, our comprehensive care center. It's located right across the street from Memorial Hospital. We have every service under one roof, from family medicine, OBGYN care, dental services for adults and children, behavioral health, and much more. So find your way to better care at Clinica Sierra Vista this year at our comprehensive care center. Visit our website, clinicasierravista.org, for the latest on this project. We'll see you soon. 
measles making a comeback and it is worrying health experts. The World Health Organization and the CDC say measles is an imminent threat in every region of the world. There were about 9 million case res cases resulting in 128,000 deaths around the world last year. Much of that can be traced back to a major drop off in measles immunizations, weak disease surveillance and delayed response plans during the COVID-19 pandemic. The WHO and the CDC say a record number of children, nearly 40 million, missed their measles vaccines last year. And back here at home, the emergency room at Memorial Hospital has been impacted by an influx of sick kids experiencing a variety of viruses like RSV. Katherine Harker, the director of pediatric services at Memorial, says they are seeing about 150 kids every day. She says that while all our RSV symptoms are usually mild in older adults and, uh, and older kids and adults, younger children are more susceptible to more severe cases. Um, for babies, it can be a little bit more significant. They can have difficulty breathing, really high fevers. Um, and so those are things that you probably, um, parents need to bring them to the emergency room if they see things like difficulty breathing, high fevers, a bluish tint kind of to the skin. Those are reasons to come on into the emergency room. If your child's just experiencing a runny nose or a cough, a low grade fever, those are things that probably a pediatrician or an urgent care um, can handle and should, um, parents are welcome to take their children there. Harker stresses the importance of washing your hands, getting the flu vaccine, and staying home when you are sick, especially during the holidays, in order to stop the spread of these respiratory viruses. Meantime, struggling Californians are getting help from the state to pay their overdue utility bills. Governor Gavin Newsom announced the state would spend nearly $650 million to help more than 1.4 million households. The money is supposed to provide economic relief to families hit hardest by the COVID-19 pandemic. Utility companies applied for the funds on behalf of the households behind on their payments. If you are in areas that think you might qualify, you can check your energy bill statements over the next two months to see if the credit was applied to your bill. Three Kern County schools are looking to win a Valley football championship tonight. Two schools, Liberty and Kennedy, are hosting their championship games and hope to win section titles in front of their home crowds. Liberty is looking to repeat as section champions, while Kennedy is looking for its fourth section championship and first since 2018. And then Shafter is traveling about 100 miles for a chance to win their first section championship since the 1950s. We got a lot to talk about, of course, over the next several hours, and you can watch a special edition of FFX with 17 Sports Director Taylor Schaub tonight at 11-11, and we will have a preview tonight on 17 News at 5. The 17 News at Noon podcast is a production of KGET and Nextstar Media Group. For more on all of the headlines in today's show, head to KGET.com.